Hello ladies and gentlemen, and you're watching Paleo 101, where we're talking about fossils, minerals, everything recorded in the Earth's rocks. Today, I want to talk about where do you find fossils. You know, many people think that you have to dig very deep under the ground to find uh, uh, specific kinds of fossils and to find fossils in general. Well, that's not the case. Fossils can be found in your backyard. You just, you want to know where to look. And a great way to understand where to look is understanding the geology of your area. That is one of the most important things you have to do because for me, I don't go willy-nilly walking around and uh, picking up fossils where I don't know the, or I'm not familiar with the geology of the area. Understanding the geology of the area and the age of rocks that you're in is very important to understand what kinds of fossils you are determined to find. So let's say you find a specific species of trilobite, but you're out looking for dinosaur fossils. Well, trilobites are only found in Paleozoic aged rocks, so you're definitely not going to find any Paleozoic aged fossils such as trilobites in rocks that are 160, 145, 65 million years old, any rocks that have been dated towards the Mesozoic era. So you want to look for fossils that are in a, a specific time uh, time ages and time zones, such as trilobites, you know, specific species of trilobite being found in the Cambrian or the Ordovician or Silurian, things of that nature. So understanding the age of where you're looking at or the age of where your rocks are in, in that specific location is very important for understanding what fossils that you're expected to find. So geology of the area is very important. And you can understand the geology of the area by pulling up a, uh, a geological map of your area. You know, we live in an area, um, the earth has been completely mapped um, geologically. We have geological maps from every state and every part of the world. And so we have a pretty good understanding of the age of rocks and the fossils that you're gonna find in those rocks. And so uh, having a geological map by your side will actually give you a great understanding of the age of rocks and some of the fossils that you may find. So understanding the geology of your area is very important. Also understanding the rocks, um, getting, getting, a, get, getting your hands on the rocks is very important as well. Because you're not going to find rocks and things of like mica schist or um, granite or anything of that nature. Fossils are only going to be found in uh, sedimentary rocks like shales and limestones and mudstones and slit stones. So you're easily going to find fossils and things like this shale which comes from the Pottsville Formation and has indentations of plant fossils inside. This comes from the Pottsville Formation in Pennsylvania, and Pennsylvania is known for having these beautiful impressions of plant fossils coming from the Pennsylvania period of the Carboniferous era, um, of the Carboniferous period. So you're going to find these plant fossils. Um, a shale, is a much, shale is a very common rock that you're going to find uh, fossils in. Also, a more common rock is going to be limestone, and that's formed during a uh, Ocean, um, shallow ocean environments, you're going to find limestone, then you possibly are going to find uh, marine fossils. So here is a piece of limestone that comes from the Ordovician rocks of Tennessee. And I found this myself, and you can actually see the uh, brachiopods that are inside of this limestone. So if you understand the rocks of your area, you are relatively understand, um, you're going to find some various fossils. A good thing about fossil hunting is the saying here. So um, the saying here goes, um, look for fossils where fossils have been found before. So uh, if you look at different localities and you know and search for different localities and fossils were found there, then you're guaranteed maybe you're, you're probably going to find fossils at that particular location where fossils have already been found. So look for fossils where fossils have already been found before in those locations and you're determined to find a fossil or two. Um, a good a good way to track down your various fossils is to write down um, location, to write down um, specific things. Because if you have information for your fossil, um, it's going to make it a lot easier. You can't always rely on your memory when documenting fossils. Information is such an important thing to have with a fossil. Because if you don't have information with a specific fossil, and it could be scientifically important, then that fossil is worthless. So writing down specific information it's very important to record and, and uh, database your fossil as well. And so usually if I go out in the field, I usually have this notebook to just record simple information, you know, where, what kind of rock you, um, you found the fossil in, what type of fossil it is, the age of the rock, your location, your state, your country, all of those um, bits and pieces of information is important to document your fossil and the information is so important. So I don't go all specific. You don't have to put, um, you know, 
you, you don't have to put, you know, measurements or anything of that nature, even though measurements can be important for understanding um, your, uh, your fossil, but you don't have to put all kinds of technical information. Um, I've also tried to do um, co coordinates. So if you want to go back to a location, having and documenting your coordinates of your area is very important. But you don't actually have to do that. But this is for serious collectors who want to document everything they want to have and it's on their specific fossils so they can go back to that location in the future to find more uh, fossil material. But I keep a book, uh, just a field guide to, excuse me, not a field guide, but a field notebook to really just record information. So I've already have stuff in here already. When I went into the Fort Payne Formation, I put Site 1. Um, I'm collecting um, Mississippian fossils from the Fort Payne Formation on August 7, 2018. So I just put, you know, just basic information about your location and the, and the formation in which you're collecting your fossils in. A also good thing to have is a field notebook. Um, there have been great field notebooks that I've actually used, but I've also used, I've highly utilized on the internet to really look at specific fossils in specific locations. And sometimes these books that I have don't necessarily give specific locations and find those specific fossils. They give basically, you know, the biology, the fossils, you know, you group, you're you know, breaking, breaking it down into vertebrates and invertebrates. And so I have this book. This is a really good book if you guys uh, want to purchase it. It's a good book. It you know talks about some of your various fossils and breaks down to you know your oldest to your um, trace fossils and then to your vertebrates and invertebrates. And so it's really good information to really you know talk about some of the various different kinds of fossils and basically an identification guide. So these good so these um, field books are actually great to have when you're um, looking for fossils. But I would recommend you actually have a identification guide that goes along which formation you're in. So I rely on information from the internet, but I also purchase these books to really give me an understanding of some of the basic information about a specific groups of fossils like ammonites, trilobites, or vertebrate fossils such as fish and um, mammalian fossils. So these books are really great to have when you're looking for fossils and understanding some of the basic information of a group of a specific kind of fossil, so such as things like brachiopods and trilobites, etc., and plants. And so fossils are really easy to find. Um, you also want to make sure you actually have permission to, um, a permission to collect fossils because, you know, if you collect fossils without any permission, and it could be, you know, you could get into a lot of trouble. So you want to make sure where you're looking for fossils is, um, it's, it's illegal it's legal to look for fossils in those specific areas. So you wanna make sure you actually have permission to look for fossils and don't go on private lands and collect fossils that way. Uh, that's a, that would definitely get you in trouble. Um, I usually collect invertebrate fossils because though they're very easy to find and they're one of the most common fossils you can pick up such as brachiopods, crinoids, trilobites, some plant fossils as well. So I've collected some, mostly collected invertebrate fossils and I haven't you know, been out there collecting vertebrate fossils. We two out there collecting vertebrate fossils, you want to make sure you're with a trained person because there are specific people that go out and collect vertebrate fossils and know what they're doing. So you actually want to go out there with a professional to, um, or know what the person is doing to collect vertebrate fossils. But I mostly collect invertebrate stuff and so that stuff is very common and so I stick with invertebrate fossils. If I do have access to vertebrate fossils, then I will definitely um, update you guys on um, how to excavate a vertebrate fossil, some of the techniques, and some other things you want to make sure when you're out there in the field collecting uh, vertebrate fossils. So um, that's some of the basic information on fossil collecting. You want to make sure um, you have permission to collect fossils. And there's actually new exposures being found every day. Um, so when people are cut, when road workers are cutting a highway, you actually have a new exposure of strata of rock. So you actually have fossils accessible to you. When I was out there collecting fossils when I was in Tennessee, um, there I found a new exposure. We found a new exposure of rock that's only been maybe a year old or something of that nature. So the rock was actually cut to um, form a new highway or a road. And the rocks are exposures on the left side and the right side of the road. And you can stop by the road and actually pick up fossils. And that's exactly where I found these brachiopods. Um, this brachiopods and this limestone was from the road work that people were doing and 
expose the rock layers. So if you know what to look for, you can definitely find fossils. Fossils can be found in everywhere. They can be found in creek beds. They can be found in the badlands. You don't necessarily have to go to deserts or badlands to look for fossils. They can be right here in your backyard. So I wanted to make sure that, you know, how to collect fossils and where you can find fossils is very important. So good, get out there, look for fossils. And it can be a fun trip and you can also learn a lot about paleontology and get inside the geology and paleontology world. This is Paleo 101 and I'll see you later.